congrats on the book and appreciate you taking the time to join us. I want to start with the title. You chose the year 2041 to paint the picture of how artificial intelligence will change all of our lives. Why this date? Well, first, uh, 41 is kind of like AI, so it's a cute little uh, idea. But most importantly, I think technology changes a lot in 20 years. I right? think about 20 years ago, what um, how we would feel today is so fantastical and amazing if we could describe our lives today to the version of us 20 years ago. So um, AI will make even more impact to, to the future 20 years from now. And 20 years is uh, not so long that one cannot um, responsibly predict what the future would be like. And it's not so short that it would be just boring and not exciting. So it's just about the right amount of time. Now, there are two extreme visions for how AI will change our lives, the dystopian versus the utopian, the Terminator versus the Jetsons versus Black Mirror. Where do you fall on that spectrum? Uh, I am an optimist, but I um, acknowledge both sides are possible. Although I would say dystopian is not one where AI takes over and we're all uh, being manipulated by it. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think AI is a neutral technology. It can be used positively or negatively. It's particularly powerful because it does a lot of things that people do so that um, we'll have to see how it works out. But historically, if we look at great technology platforms, electricity, steam engine, PC, internet, mobile, um, they've all been used and misused, but largely to the positive direction. So I, I'm optimist uh, for that reason. Let's talk about jobs. You have a nuanced view on jobs. Of course, one view is that AI is going to take all the jobs away. How many jobs will exist in 2021 compared to how many exist today? 2041, I should, let me do that again. Um, you have a nuanced view on jobs, and one of the more extreme views is that AI is going to take all the jobs away. How many jobs will exist in 2041 compared to how many jobs there are today? I think most of the jobs as we know it today will be gone and uh, AI will be doing them for us, but there will be new jobs. Um, just as any technology revolution, um, electricity uh, and uh, internet, um, the small ones like uh, the automatic elevator and Uber, they've all taken jobs and Put jobs back. So that is uh, my expectation. Uh, we have to think about jobs a little differently because AI is best at doing routine jobs. So those are going to be gone. But AI doesn't have a lot of qualities we do, such as creativity and compassion and uh, working with people and gaining trust and uh, strategic thinking. So more of us will get to do more exciting jobs as AI liberates us from having to do routine jobs. So selfishly, I have to ask, since one of your companies was working on an AI news anchor, will my job exist in 20 years? Uh, your job will exist because you're very good at it. But many <laughs> other um, journalist jobs, um, as well as uh, interviewer uh, anchor jobs, will be displaced because uh, AI will become increasingly good at um, asking questions, answering them, um, and um, uh, creating uh, excitement and interest. And we're seeing great progress in natural language today. And we're seeing uh, deep fakes as a negative use, but it can also be used positively to uh, project an engaging personality, which may be emulating someone real like yourself or completely new and virtual. So I do expect that the people watching uh, content and news and interviews and reading uh, 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 journalism in 20 years from now, most of that uh, will be written and uh, or enacted through AI and virtual uh, anchors and journalists, not, not the ones as we see today. So, you know, I guess then the question is, why shouldn't we be terrified of that? I mean, it sounds scary if a computer can trick you into thinking you're an actual person. I, I think there needs to be a clear acknowledgement when there is a computer, so there's uh, no um, uh, effort to deceive people for sure. Uh, but also, I think if AI is able to do the job of an entry-level journalist, 
writing about a quarterly report or a sporting event. That's so much work that good journalists don't have to do so that journalists can learn and grow and compete to become a columnist or a great uh, interviewer and uh, don't have to do the relative routine part of journalism. And also AI can be a tool that will find uh, interesting topics and opposing views and help craft messaging and ensure there are no mistakes. So it is a symbiosis, although really only people who are uh, uh, naturally good and passionate and work hard will get to really shine in this environment. One cannot just expect to be a uh, routine journalist or someone who's mediocre. Uh, one really has to strive to be very good. If most of the jobs that exist today won't exist, let's talk about quantity. Will there be enough jobs to go around? Will people need to work to survive? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I, so first, I think there will be a, a lot of new jobs created by AI. There will be people uh, who get to repair robots, write AI algorithms. There will be many people who, for a while anyway, uh, get to label data and collect data and clean data because AI needs to be trained on data and more such jobs will, be, will come and go. But I think the largest group of uh, number of jobs that will be available will be in the service industry where there is a particular warmth and uh, human connection that's created that AI can try to emulate, but will not do a good job. And even if AI gets better, people will still prefer people. So jobs like concierge, uh, tourist, tour, tourist guide, and a bartender, um, but also um, a big care category is a healthcare service. We're probably 10 to 15 million jobs short worldwide because it doesn't pay well and doesn't have a high social status to be an elderly caretaker. So I think more of those jobs will, will grow. Um, and, but but you're, you're right, I, I'm not sure there is enough jobs to fill you know, 40, 50 hours for everyone meaningfully in the world, but then there are many things we can do. People, some people love to be an amateur poet or paint, painter, and others would like to homeschool their kids. Others would like to volunteer their hours at an elderly home or foster home. So those things can um, actually be maybe not adding a huge amount of economic value to the society, but they add social value. And um, AI is making money for us, creating wealth. So more people should be doing work that's meaningful to the world, not so much to make money by doing just routine work. What will an entry level job then in 2041 look like? That is a very good and tricky issue because if all the routine entry level jobs are hollowed out and taken by AI, how does someone uh, get the practice to be a New York Times columnist or a uh, Bloomberg um, anchor or um, uh, scientist or a uh, great accountant or lawyer? So this is one of the stories in the book AI 2041 uh, called The Job Savior. Uh, we imagine that there would be a new uh, profession that's called job reallocator. That is when a company uh, lays off an entire department because AI is doing the work. Uh, this job reallocator com comes over and the government offers um, universal basic income, but that's not enough. There needs to be specific training and also help um, uh, psychologically for people to get over uh, the meaning of their life changing from their job to either a new job or something different and then customizing the training and then the reassignment of a job for each person. And it may actually be necessary to offer some people jobs that are virtual, that, are, that they think are real, but maybe are not, or maybe it's borderline real, not real. Um, so as to give them the sense that they're contributing, but actually they're learning and growing. And then uh, there's an entry level job, but the job itself is vacuous. Uh, it's merely a practice for them to grow. Let's talk about where we are in the global competition for AI supremacy. For example, AI plays a very different role in the lives of people in China, where you are, than it does here in the United States. Who's winning? Um, the companies in both countries are doing well. Um, in the US, uh, I am seeing uh, tremendous growth because of um, work from home. 
the use of technologies like uh, Zoom, DocuSign, and others, and the growth of cloud technologies. Uh, so I think the enterprise computing today and for the foreseeable future, US will be the indisputable leader. And as work becomes digitized, and um, uh, because if, if someone can work from home, that work can also potentially be shared with, uh, enhanced by, or replaced by AI. So US is likely to continue to lead uh, in this area of enterprise um, computing and work. Uh, China, on the other hand, has grown tremendously in uh, robotics, the use of AI in manufacturing. This was a great opportunity during COVID for social distancing, for more and more factories and warehouses to use robots. And as these technologies become better and cheaper, um, you know, for example, there is a, you know, Boston Dynamics like dog available in China for you know less than one tenth the price, um, and the, the Roomba like products as well as when I go to a restaurant, many restaurants are now served by robots, not you know humanoid robots, but a big tray where you uh, make orders and take your plates from. And in my uh, home, uh, when I order a takeout, it's delivered by a robot, a little R two D two like figure. So robotic is an area because of China's strength in manufacturing is uh, growing very, very well. And, and finally, healthcare is an area where both countries are doing amazing things, uh, combining uh, improvements in CRISPR and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, biology and life sciences, but also using the large amount of data from genetic sequencing um, and for drug discovery and many other uses. So healthcare is more universally advanced because people are placing major emphasis due to COVID. The more data we have, the smarter AI gets, but also we're facing more regulation. Consumers are, aren't sharing as much and choosing not to opt in. Do you think that those efforts around the world, global regulatory scrutiny of technology could impede the advancement? of AI if it prevents that data from being gathered and shared? Um, I, I think regulation is absolutely necessary and to prevent the most egregious um, acts that could be taken by large internet companies that have too much data. Um, but I think taking away all the data is swinging the pendulum too much to the other extreme because without the data, all of the conveniences go away and that uh, can't be good for us. I'd like to think there's some um, good medium where on the one hand, there are regulations to protect people's rights and, and punish um, very egregious behavior. But on the other hand, there are also technologies being used to protect people's personal data. Uh, things like um, privacy computing, uh, technology like, like uh, uh, federated learning, where you can entrust your data to an entity, say your, your cell phone or your hospital, where your data can be used because you trust your hospital. They have your data anyway. Uh, you need them to have your data to have your health. But now if each hospital has your data, each hospital is doing the AI training, and then all the models from hospitals are being combined later, you, there's no risk for you to lose your privacy. So you have your cake and eat it too. So I'd like to hope that technology can play a substantial part of the solution to protect our privacy and still let AI work. You've worked at some of the biggest U.S. technology companies, Google, Apple, Microsoft. Of course, there are huge technology companies in China, Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu. Do you think the power of these companies, no matter what country they're in, does their power need to be checked? Should we be concerned about how big these companies are getting? I think their power needs to be checked um, because Huge companies um, have a lot of have always had a lot of power, and that's why there have been antitrust laws. And um, uh, today, the power of data makes that power even greater because it's hard for someone to replicate a Facebook, Google, or uh, Tencent, WeChat because not only of their brand usage pattern. Um, difficulty of moving to another platform, but also the data they have and data makes AI work better. And another thing is that the power of AI makes it easy for these large internet companies to use the data they have to improve monetization, which grows their revenue profit size and makes it even harder to challenge them. 
Uh, how, however, I think one needs to be careful about how to regulate these companies. You know, simply breaking them apart isn't going to solve the problem. Taking all the data away isn't going to be solve the problem. So I think regulation should focus on responsible use of the data and severe punishment for, um, for violations. Um, and then also, um, I think long term, what needs to be done are ecosystems that helps them to align their interests with ours, with the users, so that they're incentivized to produce products that help us improve our happiness or how much we learn or how knowledgeable we become. So it's a matter of making AI looking longer term and measuring longer term progress. And you know, we, I would be happy to pay a lot more money for a product like that, that measures my longer term well-being as opposed to how many clicks um, I make or how many videos I watch. Speaking of learning, AI could also transform education, uh, there's talk of AI companions and teachers sitting with our children. What does the future of education look like to you? And is it a good thing if robots are talking to our kids instead of us? Uh, I think our kids, our kids are going to love to talk to robots no matter what we do. So we might as well make the robots a constructive and fun uh, companion. And that's something that uh, teachers cannot do, right? We cannot afford schools where there's one teacher per student, but we can have a pal or assistant or companion for each child that learns what the child likes, uh, makes learning fun. If a child likes a superhero or likes back to basketball, um, the learning can be um, basically camouflaged as games. The gamification makes it engaging, entertaining, the kids learn better. Um, and and we're, you know, we, we know that kids love toys and, and they have companions and uh, imaginary friends anyway. So why not invest in technologies that can play that role? Um, we, we also know that every child is different. Some children are excited by uh, playing a game with a superhero. Others might like um, uh, just to, to contemplate and learn new, new uh, knowledge. So the companions can be adaptive. Um, and then the, the role of the human teacher still remains because uh, the, the, the AI teacher might be able to teach and uh, test and drill and be a companion, but the children still need to learn their values and how to uh, become creative and how to work on a team and how to communicate. So I think the role of the teacher uh, evolves to be more on the uh, EQ side. You also explore XR or extended reality, which rolls augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality into one. Of course, Mark Zuckerberg has talked about this idea of the metaverse. What's your vision for extended reality? Um, I'm a huge believer in that. Uh, one, one of my short stints was working at SGI on virtual reality in the 90s. Um, but I've also been through the hype waves of VR, and there has been too many of them because I think VR and AR promise so much, but there has been so many uh, technology limitations, um, but it's too heavy or tethered or not realistic enough, makes us dizzy. But I am seeing these technologies becoming better. So certainly in the next 10 years, if not sooner, um, very usable systems that might look like glasses that can do AR, VR scenarios. Uh, so I'm, I'm bullish on that, but I'm, I'm not so sure it's quite ready yet. So it's more like um, maybe five to 10 year out time frame when all the technologies become good enough and it just clicks, kind of like when first iPhone came together, uh, that moment definitely will come. And perhaps Apple will again play a role in that. Um, and I think the biggest application is gotta be entertainment. You know, when I was at SGI, we looked at all kinds of ways to use 3D and then the predominant use is still entertainment. So as much as I like all the social extensions and um, uh, even uh, how to manage a company, um, uh, minority report scenarios, I would say we, we will need to nail entertainment and then social and others um, will come later. And, and finally, I think we have to be careful uh, because in a world where jobs are going away and people are losing their sense of why, why we exist, uh, if there is an incredibly attractive and even addictive virtual environment in which they can be sucked in, 
uh, getting into the future of WALL-E is something that's quite dangerous that people uh, leave, essentially leave the real world and live in the virtual world. We have to make sure that's um, somehow minimized. Talking of other dangers, you also predict that quantum computing will come to fruition and could become powerful enough to hack crypto wallets. How big a danger is this? What do you imagine to the cryptocurrency industry? Well, it's actually certainty. So um, because we look at all the crypto wallets that are still using the original encryption that exposes the, um, the, the true address of the wallet, and people are not moving away from those wallets. So, so it's not, it's something that shouldn't happen because um, uh, everyone who is aware and who has good senses and, and technical know-how should move their wallets, but they haven't done that. So there are you know, tens of billions of dollars in those wallets and essentially becoming a bait for whoever has access to the first quantum computer to go take that money. Uh, so that's an interesting part of one of the stories in AI 2041. Uh, but also we should remember that quantum computing al also offers quantum cryptography. So while there are some immediate dangers like stealing uh, people's Bitcoins, in the long term, it will offer an absolute and unbreakable uh, encryption and security. So it's eventually going to be a good thing for us. Your book takes inspiration from the pandemic and imagines a world where robots are doing a variety of, of tasks that humans had difficulty doing through this one, cleaning, delivery, et cetera. Will AI stop the next pandemic from happening? Uh, yeah, by, by the way, my co-author, uh, Chen Fan came up with many, most of the great ideas in the stories. I was fortunate to have a science fiction writer to work, work with me. Um, and the pandemic story, we both came up with the idea because we were both trapped um, working from home. And then we're also seeing the robotic um, uh, improvements uh, in China. So we said, well, how much will this grow in the future? There will be functional robots and doing all the housework for us. It's very imaginable based on the technology are almost mature and will be cheap enough soon. I'm um, predicting the pandemic. I'm actually quite positive. I think we clearly already have the data and a lot of the data is public data. Um, and I think there will be uh, strong incentives for countries to want to offer up data for the greater good of detecting the next pandemic. Uh, so I, I believe there will be a AI algorithms that will trigger alerts and cause um, countries and cities to rapidly respond and contain the next uh, pandemic. I think the likelihood is, uh, is high. Of course, we have to get out of the current pandemic first. All right, um, 2061, how is 2061? Last question, how is 2061 different than 2041? Uh, I think there are a lot of questions that I deferred uh, because I don't think singularity would happen, superintelligence would happen. Um, I don't think people would fall in love with AI. I don't think there would be AI would have the mind of their own self-awareness and desire and emotion. Uh, I'm, I'm quite sure in 20 years that won't happen. In 40 years, it's, I'm a lot less certain. So uh, that might be the, the next big uh, breakthrough.